So um, today is we're carrying on with vectors <coughs> and um, we're going to do this by way of Dr. Frost again. I thought the uh, Hegarty uh, exercises for what we're doing today were just too easy and you'd be done in literally 10 seconds. It would bore you silly. So I've been able to incorporate the new skill into uh, broader questions. Um, now, speaking of Dr. Frost, I, I'm really liking it. I think it's an excellent um, website. Um, thank you very much for the feedback I got from lots of you yesterday. The, the one bit that slightly irks me with it, when I go and do it in um, homework mode, which I like, because it allows you to have more than one go, uh, there will be a time and a place when I select the assessment mode so I can sort of test you but that's not what I'm wanting to do at the moment. So when I'm selecting the homework mode, I'm totally happy that when I allow you to have more than one attempt, you get two two attempts to get it right. Now, you know, that's just like um, Hegarty. And I'm equally happy that it goes and lets you have some goes to retry uh, the same question again at the end. I think some of you are feeding back to me that you like the fact that it didn't just generate a new random question. The one you got back, um, it, you could carry on having a go at that until you get it back. So that, that's all good stuff. The bit I don't like is that once you actually know the correct answer, you're then still able to go back and just pop in the correct answer and lo and behold, you get 100%. So um, that bit I'm not so keen on, though I do appreciate the feedback from George and Poppy and others that from, from my mark book point of view, it's there in orange as being, you've had to have two or three goes or what have you. And that's true. But at the end of the day, when I transfer it across to my team's mark book, I don't want it to be hugely overcomplicated. So what I've decided to do, if you get 100 percent and it takes you more than one go, so you didn't get them all right. First of all, if, you, if it takes you more than one go, that's great. You're still going to get 100 percent. But for those of you who managed to get all five or six or whatever right first time round. So basically, you've got a whole set of greens. OK, I'm going to introduce this new category in my mark book called 101 percent. OK, so it just allows me when I look at my team's mark book to see which of you guys got it right first time round. So Josh and Emily, very well done. You'll see that from yesterday you were the only two, I think, who got all five right first time round. So now don't get me wrong. I don't want the rest of you getting dispirited. And if you get a few wrong, you can't be bothered to go back and correct them. I do still want you if you've made an error to go back and get 100 percent, please. OK, but I just wanted there to be a little incentive and a little bit of a recognition in my mark book for those of you who've just got it bang on first time round. So I think in a way this gives me the best of both worlds with Dr. Frost. You guys get the chance to um, go back and learn from your mistakes, which is what homework is all about. But also uh, you get the opportunity to just prove yourself uh, that little bit better and, it, and for it to be recognised in my mark book that if you manage to get it right, you know, perfectly right first time round, you just get that little extra bit of credit. So I think that might be quite a nice way of me just doing it. So it will only be when we do Dr. Frost. OK, but um, um, so that so if you suddenly see you've got 101 percent or it's been marked out of 101, that's why. Now, um, what we are doing today is our final bit of vectors. OK, um, so we're going to be going back and looking at column vectors again. We just touched upon this the other day that, you know, they're, they're ever so easy. OK, um, so we're going to be doing column vectors today. But what you're going to the, the new concept is what's called the magnitude of a vector. Now, that's just the size of a vector. OK, so let's just say, for example, we got vector A, which has got the column vector three, four. So that's three along the corridor, four up the stairs. OK, and that's your three, four. So your overall vector A there, your vector A, is that, right? That is your vector A. Now, when we're asked for the magnitude, magnitude just means size. That's literally what is the length of that vector. Now, clearly, that's just from um, Pythagoras. OK, so to work out the magnitude of the vector, so to work out the magnitude of A, we simply just have to do Pythagoras. So we're going to do the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is square root of 9 plus 16. So that's the square root of 25, which is 5. So the answer would be 5. 
OK, now I don't not sure it crops up at IGCSE, but lots of you will be going on to do uh, further maths and the A level. The way this would be represented is a single um, uh, symbol. You still go like A like that, but to make the point that it's the magnitude, you take the modulus of it. So you just put it in um, those two straight lines down the side. Now, I don't think that crops up at IGCSE. So when they want the magnitude of A, or you're saying this is the magnitude of A, you've just got to write it out as being the magnitude of A. Now, clearly, if we had the vector um, 3 minus 4, OK, so you've gone 3 along and 4 down along and four down that's going to be exactly the same length okay that's still going to give you the answer of five because you're going to be doing the square root of three squared and the square root of minus four squared and obviously a minus times a minus is a plus so that's still going to give you nine plus sixteen twenty five it's still going to give you five okay so magnitude simply means length now um you're going to be doing five questions in a minute OK, uh, it's all set up as a Dr. Frost. If you want to download them, <coughs> excuse me, the, the questions are sitting on Teams as the next um, as the next uh, assignment I've set up. So you've got the option to download the questions um, onto, uh, you know, onto a Word document if you want to. Or you can just be obviously just doing your own workings in your book and then just uploading your answers into Dr. Frost. OK, now the, um, there's going to be five questions. Uh, the first three are very straightforward. They'll probably take you five minutes. The second two are quite challenging. Now, I don't want to just model those for you. I think that just gets a bit boring when I just literally model how to do something. I want you to start getting the experiences that you come across something in a test and you're going to have to try and figure it out for yourself. So what I'm planning on doing, I, I, I want us to basically come back later, let's say at 10.40, so I want us to go live again at 10.40 for me to go over, in particular, the last two questions if you struggled with them. OK, so please, can you come back at 10.40 for another bit of live lesson when I will go and um, talk you through all five answers, but in particular, the final two. Now, I just want to give you a hint. If you happen to know a couple of vectors, say you know A to B and B to C, and the question is asking you to work out the magnitude of A to C. You've got to do all that geometric um, vectors work that we've done before. How do you get from A to C when we know A to B and B to C? So you might need to know, a do a little bit of a diagram to help you gather your thoughts. So you're just going to have to do your usual bit of, you know, minus this and plus that and all that and that. So just try and figure. So step one, you've just got to work out um, the actual vector AC just using your normal geometric skills. OK, all those lessons we had where you were just going up and down, left and right. If you go down it the wrong way, it's a minus and all of that. So if you were asked for the magnitude of AC, step one, just go and work out what the normal vector AC is. And then step two, do the Pythagoras bit on it. Now, that's the only clue I want to give you. And I think that crops up on question four, I think. So that's it for now, guys. OK, that's it for now. OK. Um, OK, so um, I want you to try the five questions that are on Hecate, uh, on sorry on Dr. Frost and I want us to go live again at 10.40. Um, so if you're struggling with questions four and five, that's when I'll go over them. OK, let's just still give you a bit of time to go back and correct them if you want to. But also it's giving you guys a chance to try and get them right beforehand because that's giving you half an hour to try and do the, those questions. Clearly, if you've got 100 percent, uh, you don't have to come back for the live bit and it will be recorded. OK, if you need to be somewhere else, it will be recorded. Uh, OK, but um, don't stress at the moment if you can't do four and five, but I'm not going to help you on four and five until 1040. All right. I'm, so um, the other three I will if you're getting stuck on the others. But 1040 is when we're going to do four and five. OK, that's it for now, guys. So off you go. Try and do those five questions. I will keep an eye on how you're getting on. Bye.